How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about The Cursed. This is from February 18th, 2022 and is written and directed by Sean Ellis. This movie stars Kelly Riley, Boyd Holbrook, and Anya Rose Daly. Now, first thing I want to say, 2022. This is an early 2022 horror movie and to be honest, the years kind of got off to a slow start. There's been a few things, but not near as much as we're used to, especially because January is usually stuffed with a few B-horror movies, but uh, a little slow this year. I mean, there will be stuff coming out later, but we've got off to a slow start. And that's why I was even looking at this movie at all. Um, the ads really don't do this movie justice. And my initial hype for this movie was pretty low, and it wasn't until other reviewers started telling me about this that I really got interested in this movie. You see, the movie has the super generic title, The Cursed, which it was originally going to be called Eight for Silver, and Eight for Silver is a much more interesting title, but they went with the generic title, The Cursed, and there's been several movies called this. Um, and then the trailer, made it look like a generic, it's a curse, maybe it's a ghost or something, you know. The, the trailer didn't really sell it. And the thing is, this movie is about a creature. And once I found out what the creature was, my interest spiked so, so much higher. And I don't really know why the ad team did it this way. Um, maybe it was some studio guy, or maybe it was someone on the ad team. Someone along the way freaked out, didn't know how to market this movie, and decided to make it look as generic as possible. And if they had just told you what this movie was about, I would have been way more interested. And, like, this movie wouldn't have been on my radar at all if February wasn't so slow. Uh, now... I'm going to talk about the creature. It's something that I think you should know going into it. If you don't want to know, uh, just know that this movie is pretty good. If you like uh, really old school style movies with a sense of deep doom and gloom and a little bit more of a bite, uh, this movie is pretty good. It is gloomy, which isn't going to be for everybody, but it's still pretty good. But I think you should know the creature before you go in. And that creature is the werewolf. That had my interest so much higher. It's a werewolf movie, not just some generic shadow person movie that it made it look like. It's a cool, classic monster werewolf movie. And if the ads had told me that, I would have been much more excited. But it wasn't until I watched a few other reviewers and they told me it was a werewolf movie that was when I found out, and I really don't know what the ad team was doing, but yeah, this movie was mismarketed. Yeah, that's that's not great. The werewolves in here are pretty cool. They're a little different than your average werewolf. Uh, they reference the Beast of Jebedon, which is a true story, and I'm sure we're going to get some nerds going, Oh, it's not a werewolf movie, it's a Beast of Jebedon movie. It, it, close enough. Um, but yeah, the werewolves in here are a little different. The transformation sequence is a little different. The rules are a little different. And the design is too. But that being said, still very classical. It's not like one of those where they just threw out everything and did their own thing. There's lots of very classic moments in this that reminded me of the old school Universal and Hammer stuff, you know? The the old school setting, the candlelight, you know, you get uh, the silver bullets, you get this character that comes in that's, you know, a lot like Van Helsing. There's a lot of old school moments, but with a, a new twist as to how the monster uh, looks and operates and stuff. But you still get the gypsies placing a curse and stuff, but a little different this time around and overall I did like the changes to make it different. It didn't stray so far off the path but it definitely has its own unique vision. Um, but anyway, yeah, I definitely would recommend this if you like old school gloomy stuff. 
it does get gloomy, it does get pretty dark, and a few times does get kind of gory. There's definitely a scene in here inspired by John Carpenter's The Thing, so I know doom and gloom isn't for everybody, uh, but if you like that stuff, you'll like this. There are a few too many dream sequences, and there is a few cases of bad CGI, but not really enough to weigh it down, and I'd say, you know, not the best thing ever, but it's still pretty good, especially for a new classic Monsters movie. I, I love the classic Monsters, you know? Uh, but anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the plot. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points and make sure you guys know what the movie's about. So I'm going to analyze it, but I'll be avoiding the last bit. Anyway, we open up in World War I. A guy got shot, and he's rushed into the medical tent. They pull out all the bullets, but then they find a large silver bullet inside of him. That's not from the war. How did the silver bullet get there? Well, we jump back in time, and we find this old-timey landowner, and he has a confrontation with these gypsies. You see, he says that he owns the land the gypsies are living on, but that might not be the truth. They have some old documents, and the land is disputed. And he talks to the town elders, and the elders say, show up with a posse, you won't have to actually use them, the threat of force will be enough to get them to move. And the posse goes down to the gypsies, and they start talking, but something goes wrong and it turns into a massacre. And I do like the way this scene is showed. You don't know what happened, you don't know who said something wrong or who did something wrong. It's kept in this wide shot where you just see the people go down, start to talk, and then they fight. So you don't know the specifics. But yeah, it turns into a pretty gruesome and hard to watch massacre. And after things are over and they're cleaning up, they find two gypsies that they missed. Uh, one is a man, and the man insults them, and as revenge, they cut off his hands, give him a big coat, and stuff the hands and feet with straw. They, they cut off the feet too, and they put a bag over his head, and they turn him into a human scarecrow, where he slowly dies pinned up as a scarecrow. And that's pretty cool. Uh, you get a side of creepy scarecrow with your werewolf movie. It's a pretty creepy figure that they do do some cool stuff with. Uh, the other one is the old woman, and she had actually tried to bite some of their men with a pair of silver teeth. So they take the teeth from her and they go, okay, these are clearly cursed, they're silver, you think we'd want to sell them, but these are bad, and they bury her and the silver teeth together in a mass grave, and she gets buried alive. Very, very gruesome and dark opening to your movie, you know? Uh, so anyway, even though they're all dead and buried, it's not over. All the town kids start to have dreams. Dreams of the Scarecrow Man, where they all go in the field and are compelled to start digging, and they dig up the silver teeth, and of course Scarecrow Man scares them because he's scary, right? Uh, so all the kids in town are getting this same dream, which inspires them to actually go and dig up the silver teeth. The first kid that finds the teeth feels compelled to put them in his mouth and bites the son of the original landowner that started this whole mess. So I really do like this. You know, the idea of how does the werewolf curse start? Well, it starts with someone who's not really a werewolf. He's kind of a proto-werewolf. He's not really turning into a wolf, but he has artificial teeth that are all cursed and will make him bite someone to get the curse started. A really clever way to begin the movie also, gotta love a good cursed art object, you know? These teeth, they all have little symbols written on them. Really, really cool looking cursed object here. Uh, so, the one kid gets bitten, and they take him back to the manor, and he's sick and in bed and writhing in pain. 
and they think an animal bit him because none of the kids are going to rat out their friend. Now, after this, the daughter has a dream sequence, which is literally what we just saw. It's he, The kid got bit, came home, then the daughter dreams about what just happened, but this time there's a scarecrow scare at the end. Yeah, there is a lot of jump scares in this movie, and a lot, well, not a lot of jump scares. I meant to say a lot of dream sequences that end in jump scares, but those are only the first third of the movie. Uh, for the the other two thirds, this kind of fades away, and the the dreams are, are kind of repetitious, which does have a sense of gloom behind them, and it also gives the Scarecrow character much more to do because he's not really alive in real life. And there is some good stuff to be had with these dream sequences. There's just a little bit too many of them, and they usually end on a, a jump scare, you know? So these are pretty much confined to the first act, but I really feel like in the original version of this movie, there's probably only like two or three of them, and the studio went... This needs more jump scares, more dreams, more dreams, you know? Uh, so yeah, that really kind of is only the first uh, the first bit, though. Uh, but anyway, the daughter walks into her brother's room, sees him all wrapped up in these weird vines, gets the parents, but when they come back, the kid is missing. So yeah, the little kid is going to be the first werewolf, but it's kind of a missing child story and everybody's all worried about the fate of this kid. And that's when the doctor comes into town. And he's a doctor, so everybody trusts him. And they get him to help in the hunt for the missing kid. But of course, he's not really just there by happenstance. He is actually a monster hunter. And that's where you get <coughs> some of the really cool stuff with this movie. He's a monster hunter. And the early part of this movie, he has to track down the monster, figure out what happened, figure out the massacre that he wasn't there for. So there's almost like a mystery element. And then it comes time for hunting, and he has to rig up traps and figure out how to hunt a werewolf. And then he has to try to keep the rest of the village safe and say, hey, look, don't go out by yourself. Have a couple people with guns. And then when things get worse, he has to say, hey, look, just stay in the church as often as you can, okay? So it comes into a village management system that I really do like. There's a fair bit of analysis in this. And also, if you get bitten by the werewolf and you don't die, you're gonna turn. So there's a case of management here. If you get too many cases of the werewolf, they start to multiply exponentially and if you don't keep track of how many werewolves they are and keep that number down, you could quite easily get a whole bunch of werewolves and it will become, you know, something you can't figure out how to get out of. So I really did like that element of it. And plus, the werewolf transformation is unique. The whole vines wrapping around you and pulling you into the dirt, that's a little weird, but um, when it does it well, it does it well. Like I said, there's a scene with a dead werewolf that starts to turn into John Carpenter's The Thing with a, a very disturbing bit of imagery there. And when the when it's done practically, there is a fair bit of practical effects, and they work well and they look really good. But there is some stuff they couldn't do practically, like some of those vines. And, and when it goes into CG, it doesn't look the best. And the creature's predominantly CG, and they do a good job of keeping it primarily in the shadows and making it a lurking presence. It doesn't always look the best. You know, it's not a huge budget movie. It looks good enough, but you definitely see why it's hiding in the shadows a lot. But it is a reinvention of the werewolf, significantly less hair. And it still looks pretty creepy, and it still is a werewolf, but a different idea on it, you know? And I do like... You know, it's still classic enough, but with a unique spin, you know, so I definitely do like that. And overall, I really did like this movie, and I kind of want to see, like, a whole, you know, cursed monster-verse now, you know? How would this world do the Invisible Man or a vampire or something? Maybe, maybe do a remake of Vampire, you know? Um, I could see a whole bunch of movies set in this universe, 
And I would really like that. You know, the, the new Blumhouse Universal monsters, they're all seeming to be set in modern day, I would think, which is cool. But I could definitely go for an old school, you know, turn of the century, you know, monster verse. There'd be a lot to like in there, and I definitely could see more movies here. But yeah, I really like the classic monsters, and this turned out to be, you know, a good old school classic monster movie with a modern bite that reinvents enough but doesn't go off the rails. And, you know, I did like that element of strategy that the Monster Hunter brings to it. He's a really good main character. You know, Monster Hunter being your main character, that's a good idea. And it overall works out uh, pretty well. Like I said, it's not perfect, but, you know, it works out pretty fun. And if you like the werewolf, go check this movie out. Uh, anyway, uh, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. And to everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. If you guys want to see more, you can click right there and see more. This should be my classic monsters playlist. I've talked a lot about the Universal and the Hammer monsters in there, as well as some of the newer takes on them. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant monster playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.